everyone! Today we have another gouache painting tutorial where we are walking through this spring Fuji mountain painting. I'm using a watercolor sketchbook for it, but pretty much any thicker paper will work with gouache paints. It definitely doesn't need to be high quality or anything. Then I'm using these Holbein gouache paints and I'm showing you all the colors here in case you have similar colors at home. But if you don't, pretty much any blue, red and green shade will work. So don't worry if you don't have these exact paints. We're also gonna use black and white for mixing different shades and some dark brown for the tree branches later. I wanted my painting to have a clean, straight border, so I used washi tape on the edges, but after that, without further ado, let's just get started. I wanted to start this picture with a very quick pencil sketch, just to have some guide for myself, especially for the size and placement of the mountain in the center of the picture, and also to get a rough idea of the horizontal line where the lake will start in the picture. I also drew some initial sketches for the tree branches, but these will be all covered with paints, so I just did it to have a better idea of where I want to place the flowers in the picture. But after you have some idea of all the different elements in the picture, we can start mixing the first colors that will be for the sky. I wanted the whole background of this picture to have a very blue tone. So we're gonna start by mixing lots of white paint with blue. And I also added a tiny bit of green and black to the mixture to get a little bit less vibrant blue tone. Any bigger brush will work for these first stages in the painting, but I think a flat brush like this is probably the easiest to use for a very smooth background layer. So I started to just sweep this blue tone all across the upper part of the painting, and with gouache you can always adjust the colors even after laying them down. So I felt like this first color I mixed looked a little bit too dark, so I added some more white to my mixture and continued with that one. If you notice you're getting a lot of bold spots in any point of the painting, it probably means that you're using a little bit too much water with the paints. So we're trying to get this pretty thick consistency where there's just enough water to allow the paints to glide a little bit smoother on the paper. I added this touch of purple tone to the lower part of the sky, which is completely optional, but I do think that it matched well with the flowers we're gonna add to this painting later. It might be a little bit difficult to blend two colors like this smoothly together with gouache paints, but what I think helps is to remove some of the excess water from your brush and smooth over the place where the colors meet. I did it here with this smaller brush and I think it allowed a little bit smoother transition from the blue tone to the purple. The whole lower half of the painting will be for a lake. So what we are doing here is pretty much just copying all the colors from the top part to create a water reflection. This definitely doesn't need to be completely identical. And some of the background will also be covered with the flowers later. So definitely don't worry if everything doesn't look completely perfect. But now that we have the sky ready, it's time to move on to paint the mountain itself. In my picture, the left side of the mountain will be in the shadow, so I used this slightly darker blue tone to color that whole area, and then I'm starting to color the lower part of the mountain with this even darker greenish blue shade. So what I wanted here was that the top of the mountain is covered in snow and then it will connect with the lower part that is just some forest around the mountain. I highly recommend looking through some pictures of real mountains if it would help you to understand how this looks in real life. 
The mountain I chose for this is the Fuji mountain in Japan and there are many pictures just like this one online with the cherry blossoms and everything so studying pictures like that would probably be very helpful. But anyway, these first layers don't need to be detailed or even perfectly in the right place. From here on, we are slowly starting to add more and more details on top of these background color layers, so all of this can and will still be modified. So after I was somewhat happy with the colors I chose here, I did another round on top of these first layers and this time I started to add a little bit more shadows and color variation in the mountain. I think mountains are not the easiest thing to paint for sure, so just take your time with these small details. I think it helps to visualize some sharp edges and angles, and they don't usually need to go all the way down the mountain. I think it often looks a little bit better to break up some of the shapes and shadows on the way. And you can also switch up the darkness of the colors you're working with. Thank you. Also the lower forest part will need some color variation and details, but before we completely finish with the mountain here, I thought it would be good to first add something more to the lake reflection. The white line between the two darker stripes here indicates the point where the lake starts and you can often see a lighter line like this in landscape pictures where there's a reflection on a lake. But then when it comes to the water surface itself, all we want to do is just roughly copy similar colors we used at the top. And then I added some horizontal lines to smudge the image a little bit. I think this step can be as detailed or smudgy as you want. And a good part of this will also be covered with the flowers later. So I feel like this is a step that really depends on how much time and effort you want to use for this painting. Going for a more detailed, photorealistic outcome always takes a really long time. And I personally don't think it's necessary for a smaller painting practice like this. Anyway, now I switch to my smallest detailing brush and I use this to add some final details to the mountain itself. This is also a step you could definitely just skip in the whole process if you don't have too much time, but I think adding all these small dots and lines helps to give a little bit sharper look to the whole image. 
so I chose some even darker colors and also added some of these small lighter details just so there would be a little bit more variation in the shadowy parts and just everywhere in the mountain overall. After that we are finally done with the whole background of this picture and now it's time to start painting the flowers. For this I started by actually drawing some very light guidelines for myself with a pencil so I had a little bit better idea of where I wanted to place most of the flowers. But after that I mixed this light pink tone and using the same medium sized brush I started to add this plops of color to the picture. We don't need to worry about actually drawing individual flower shapes because in this picture the flowers are so small and far away that just creating these overall shapes will be more than enough for us. I think it's a good idea to maybe skip some parts of the branches and then create almost these groups of flowers to different parts. Placing all the flowers very symmetrically might give a little bit less natural outcome, so don't be afraid to experiment with these very uneven groups and shapes. If you feel like the pink colors are not showing up very vibrant against the background, it might help to add a completely white background layer first before adding all the light pink flowers on top. I didn't need to do that in this picture, but if the background colors are a little bit darker or your paints are a little bit more translucent, it might help you to take this extra step. But then after the first colors, we're just gonna keep adding different tones to the flowers to add some more shadows and variation. So I was switching the amount of red I was adding to my white paint to get some different tones of pink here and just keep layering them over the previous colors. Then in some point we also need to add the branches, which is probably the most nerve-wracking part of this whole painting. 
I recommend using your thinnest brush for this and I mix this very dark color from the brown and black paints I had on my palette and it might feel intuitive to just paint some curvy lines for the branches but actually if you look at trees in real life the branches are mostly formed by these straight angular lines so keeping the lines here as sharp as possible and creating these angles in them might give you a little bit more natural outcome in some parts, the flowers can also overlap the branches, so you don't need to throw them perfectly all the way through. And there can also be some very thin branches in the middle of the flowers, even if they don't all connect to the main branch in the picture. But after this step, I just kept adding some color variation here on the flowers. I think it made the biggest difference to add some very dark small dots and shadows here and there. So I used a very dark reddish brown color for this. And then you can also add some pure white highlights to add even brighter highlights. But after you finally feel happy about the flowers, it's time to remove all the washi tapes around the painting and reveal the final outcome. I really hope you enjoyed this quick gouache painting practice and that you maybe learned something new. If you'd like to see even more tutorials from me, I do post an extra tutorial every month on my Patreon. So if you're interested in that and some other extra benefits as well, the link to that is in the description. But I think that's all for this time. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having an amazing day or night wherever you are. And see you in my next one. Bye bye.